Hi guys, welcome to the Lucky Stow, the Keto Variety Show. I'm Danielle, and today we are gonna have a sit down. We are gonna have a chit chat. We're gonna have a walk horns. We are going. Hi guys, I'm Danielle. So I'm Ray. I'm the Papa. Hi guys, and welcome. I'm Stove. I'm the Oprah. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Otherwise, the government will listen to your every move and watch your every sentence. Today is November 29th. So that means you're four days away from Thanksgiving. We've gone through Thanksgiving. Most of you have. If you're an American-based or Canadian, and Canadian, well, you, you guys had yours in October, right? Comment down below if you did. In any case, we did all of that. We had the fun. We made our goodies, pumpkin pies, cookies. I'll show some pictures of them. Now it's time to talk. Let's talk goals. Let's talk mindset. Let's talk, uh, yeah, if we've reached any of our goals. Have we set any goals? Uh, okay, a lot of people try to use this time. You try to use New Year's for a time to do this. But why not do it right after you fail? <laughs> I didn't fail. We chose to eat what I ate. I knew exactly what I was going to be eating. And I planned it that way. So I did not fail. This was a planned uh, pause in my keto journey. A few things I want to talk about too is um, my my health uh, and where that is now, uh, my journey, where that is now, and mindset. But first and foremost, I want to say happy late Thanksgiving. If you watched the post, you saw how Renee in Dutch uh, showed you how to make a uh, keto pumpkin pie. And if you made it, yay! And if you didn't, okay, yay! If you just made regular pumpkin pie or uh, uh, pecan pie or whatever it is, if you enjoyed your Thanksgiving with your family, which now is more and more and more, hopefully uh, important to you, considering that we have such lockdown uh, rules, then I want to say, great. Whatever you ate, fine, great. If you're watching me, it means it didn't kill you yet. So I just want to say, good. Good for you. You enjoyed your life. Now, if you stepped off track or if you planned to take a detour, then let's talk about how to get us, how to get us back. Um, but again, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving first. And we made an awesome turkey. It was delicious. We did a rub of butter and coconut aminos. You guys know how I feel about coconut aminos. But 
on on um, marinades, they're is just they're just fine. I would use soy sauce, but now we have coconut aminos, and we have two bottles, so we gotta use this stuff, right? Right. So we uh, did a rub of um, butter, real butter. I didn't think I was gonna do it. I, we were gonna use coconut oil, but we wound up baking with the coconut oil. Coconut oil, this coconut oil, that coconut. So someone gifted us with a container of coconut oil. And we used it all, or most of it, so that wasn't going to be on the bird. So I did have some butter, so we did butter, coconut aminos, we have chili powder, we had thyme, we had salt, pink Himalayan salt, we had pepper, and then we shut, we stabbed holes <laughs> into the carcass, and we shoved garlic in it. <laughs> that sounds horrible, doesn't it? I know, it's okay, but that's what happened. And then we had um, two small, medium small onions, and we put them in the cavity. We didn't stuff it. We didn't. I, I didn't do stuffing. I didn't do stuffing. I wanted cornbread stuffing, but I mean, I already knew I was going to be going overboard, so I didn't want to. Uh, actually, I just didn't want to go to the store and get some cornbread uh, uh, cornmeal because honestly, if I went and got the cornmeal, I would have made the cornbread stuffing. Because cornbread stuffing is delicious to me. I am not afraid of carbs. I'm not afraid of sugar. I'm not allergic to any of those things. But my body doesn't like it. And that's the difference. So you have to choose what you like. And you have to make decisions as to what's going to help your journey. And that's what I had to do. So Thanksgiving was a mishmash of a whole lot of carby things. And a few not carby things. And you know what? That's just the way it is. That's the way it was. And I'm the first one that I will be the first one in my house to tell you that I went down on the carby things. Talking about myself personally. I mean, I. <laughs> and it's not over because if you have an American Thanksgiving, you know you have leftovers. But you can stop yourself if you want. You don't have to be completely derailed. This was my planning. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday in the whole year. So I've already, I decided that I wasn't going to get all crazy. Did I want to make keto goods? Yes. Did I make keto goods? Yes. Did I make things that weren't keto? Yes. Did I eat them? Yes. Did I eat a lot of it? Yes. And is there still some more left over? Yeah. Am I going to eat it? Well, <laughs> Waste not, want not. And we enjoyed ourselves, and that was perfect. Rules of the government as far as having a certain amount of people in our house. And so we maintain that because we don't, one, don't want to get anybody sick, and two, we don't want to get a puta or a fine. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want anybody calling the police on the Americans who are having Thanksgiving in the Netherlands and, uh, and showing that we don't know how to be responsible. And now, my health journey. So the reason I started Keto was not to become a Keto Nazi. It was not to become a Keto Policeman. It was not to become a part of a new cult. It was not a part, it was not to become a, a, a new member of some religious faction. It was because I have diabetes and I want to eat. And the doctors who told me I had diabetes didn't tell me what I could eat. They just said, don't eat this. And that wasn't enough for me. That didn't help me at all. And so I continued on in a, in a well, I'm going to eat what I, if I'm going to die, I'm going to eat what I, what I want to eat and enjoy myself anyway. And so years and years and years after, I would, I would like to say I'm in my eighth year of uh, diabetes diagnosis. I could be corrected. Um, I have a, my story on the blog. You can check it out right here. Um, but really, the... The diagnosis set me back. It set me back for something fierce. I was afraid. And so I stopped eating all of everything that looked like it could bring sugar. Or in the, uh, so all the white things. The first thing they said was cut out all the white things. No milk. That has sugar in it, guys. Full carbohydrates. Hardcore. Um, rice. Nothing but starch. Hardcore. Potatoes. Nothing but starch. Hardcore. Yeah, okay. We have some... Um, some macronutrients in there too, and some micronutrients, but overall, I mean, it all converts to sugar. 
um, the breads that, that we, I was consuming converted to sugar. I'm talking about regular breads, tortillas. I'm from California, guys. That's what we did, tortillas. Sugar, 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 sugar. Oh, well, you can have a whole wheat sugar, uh, uh, tortillas. Whole wheat tortillas, will you? Please, please. That's like saying here's some fake corn. <laughs> no, if I'm gonna eat tortillas, I'm gonna eat tortillas, right? That was how I felt about it. Oh, well, you can eat drink this, low fat this. And I was already drinking low fat stuff because they said low fat is bad. Fat is bad. And as a diabetic, the more fat you have on the body, the closer you are to heart attack. Take your flu shot, heart attack. I'll probably, that'll probably get cut out. Cut that out, Danielle. Don't forget. Um, or not. Um, but in any case, diabetes was uh, something that pushed me to keto. Uh, after many years of not knowing what to do, what I could eat, whatever, and then kind of figuring it out, kind of, but not really. And then having to go through um, insulin shots and, and different pills and really uh, explosive diarrhea because of the pills. Let's just be honest. If you have ever been diabetic and you've had to take metformin, then you probably know about the rumble grumbles that happen in your belly. The rumble grumbles. Whoa, gotta go. And that's exactly the way it was. Or if you, were an, uh, un, if you didn't take care of your diabetes, you probably also felt, if you were as bad as I was, that all of a sudden you had to rush to the restroom. Oh my gosh, oh, I've got to relieve myself. Oh, too late again. Better carry one or two or three or four pairs of panties with you or a pair of uh, underclothes because diabetes had no, uh, had no mercy. There was no mercy when it came to uh, diabetes or grace. So um, I saw my, diet, my dietitian on my way back and she was so very disappointed in me and honestly, I was disappointed in myself. I picked up even more weight. It was bad. She said, you got to do something. I said, okay. And I meant it this time. So researching, um, I, I already bumped against uh, someone, by, somebody by, someone by the name you may know, Wes Shoemaker. And where is he? On YouTube. And what does he do? High falutin, low carb, y'all. <laughs> Love him. You got to check him out. I'll put a card. But in any case, or he'll be on this side, actually. But in any case... I, we were watching him for a long time before I really got started in uh, uh, keto, just because he's funny. He's funny and he presents food in a way that makes me remember why I like food in the first place. Because it tastes good. I'm not, I'm not, a, I don't hate carbs. Carbs are not my enemy, okay? My disease was my enemy. Did it come along by overeating carbs? Yes. Do I want to go back to eating carbs? In the manner of speaking, as far as the way I know carbs, like croissant and baguette and uh, puff pastries and, and, and egg wraps, noodle, egg, you know, those things, those flaky things that you can't, that we have yet to come up with to replace. Yeah, yeah. Can I make cakes all day? Sweet as honey, baby. Sweet as honey .co. All day I dream about food.com. Can I? Yes. Yes, I can. Because they've made it easy for me. And sometimes I even come up with stuff. And if I don't come up with it, Lydia all of a sudden says, Hey, well, what if you do this, 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 and this? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Pasta. Renee, why don't you cut one egg out of there so it's not so sticky? Oh, yeah. So we got that covered. But that's not the point. The point is, I do not hate carbs. I went to the di the same dietitian, I want to say three Wednesdays ago. I wanted to talk to you guys about this before. It just, there were other videos that I wanted to get out first. So I went to the dietitian. I, we ran our numbers. I gave my blood work. I was, of course, fasted and everything. And uh, she was ecstatic. She was ecstatic for me. She said, your numbers are amazing. My habe ase. <laughs> I don't know how to say My A1C was from 80, which is apparently way off the charts in 2018 when I first started seeing her. And it, believe me, it was still way off the charts when I, it, uh, during the time that I had not begun uh, with keto. Keto started September 19th for me to 34. Now I did a, I did a little thing and I'll probably, maybe I'll put a picture here to show what it was, but 
I, I checked it out to see what the, what that looks like. 34 is a better than normal. That's like a normal person. My A1C is 34. 34, you guys. This is amazing. So that means like I'm a normal person. <laughs> So that was really great. That was exciting. So guess how I celebrated? Oh, you won't believe it. I had chile verde, chicken, and rice and beans. <laughs> Collie rice? Mm -mm. Beans? What kind of beans? I mean, soybeans? Mm -mm. I had brown beans. Starchy of the starchiest, probably, in my eyes, because it's creamy. And regular rice. Was that a good call? After all that hard work? For me, it was. I made that decision. I chose it. I knew exactly what I was doing. It wasn't being forced down my throat. Was it going to wreck all my progress that I've made for over a year? No. No. But if I continue to eat as I am currently, based off of this Thanksgiving holiday month or two, will that? Yeah, it's not going to help me much. I mean, I have to tell you that, honestly, I felt the inflammation. <laughs> I'm laughing because when I when I when I walked up the stairs before when I was walking up the stairs strictly keto, I didn't feel the inflammation anymore because I and it felt great. My knees weren't as weak. It's, but as the days continued to roll on with the foods that I was eating, the I did I started feeling inflammation because I wasn't just eating regular uh, keto stuff anymore. I was like, oh well, I can add this, I can add that now. Let me bring it on back. Woo! Because I don't hate carbs. I don't hate carbs. I don't hate carbs and I don't hate sugar. Does do they not work with my body well? That is the question. I've been testing my blood sugar now for the past couple of days just because I finally got some strips again there. And after eating a a a, a bad a full on load of just full carb mess. Really? I tested in the morning at 7.1 that's really, really good considering all the stuff that I ate the night before. Really. But, I mean, <laughs> I can feel great. My blood sugar be, could be on point, but that's not the problem. It's the inflammation. That I've decided that I'm not going to let the inflammation uh, be my master. So, am I going to continue on now that I've uh, achieved my goal? Because really, the dietitian said, I asked her. I mean, you want to know these things, right? I asked her, I said, am I now still considered diabetic? And of course, liability wise, she couldn't say that just yet. She said, give it five years. And then we can honestly say, if everything is the same, that you're no longer diabetic. That doesn't bother me. I mean, I was, I, I love the keto food. It's not like it's not, I mean, and it's not expensive. It's just eating normal food. A lot of people keep on saying keto is expensive. It's not expensive if you cut the other junk out of your life. It's not expensive. Because, you're one, you're, you're accommodating for the stuff that you're not spending, the money that you're not spending on the things that you shouldn't be eating anyway, or that you've decided not to eat, that are not ketosis friendly. And you've also um, moved on to some other things. So we've talked about do some healthier things, healthier fats, things that will help you. And, and it, the satiety of it all will help you to not be hungry anymore or as much. So, and you can all, you wind up fasting without even knowing, oh man, it's one o'clock and I'm still not hungry. Okay. And I haven't eaten since last night or one, oh man, it's three o'clock and I'm still not hungry and I haven't eaten since whatever. And it's good. Your body is regenerating itself, regenerating cells. You know, let some autophagy kick in there if you can. Of course, that comes from not just the intermittent fasting, but it depends on what your goals are. All of that to say, um, yeah, I, I love this journey that I'm on. I am appreciating it. And am I going to go backwards? Nah. Well, I probably add a few things back in, like beans. I mean, like I said before, I'm from California. I mean, you guys may, it may not bother you at all or it makes no sense to you. But coming from like the southern Southern California, I'm very accustomed to beans, frijoles, refried beans, all of the good stuff. Spanish rice. We did a we did a Spanish collie rice video. I'll insert that somewhere. If it's not above, then it'll be in the notes so that or so that way you can click it. The link. Hey Lydia, welcome to the keto, the Lucky Stove Keto Variety Show. 
<laughs> and as I, I'm, as I'm pretty sure you all know, she is part of the team, so it's not like I really need to welcome her. <laughs> <laughs> but all the same. So, like I said, Olivia is on here today to ask me some questions. We have not pre-designed these questions. I may have given thrown out some ideas, but like none of the questions she's going to ask have I haven't pre-thought them out. So, whatever I say is what I say. And I may feel that there's a bit of loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so uh, keto. We we can see how it's worth it now. By reaping the benefits and like losing the weight, you're getting healthier. But like for someone who hasn't tried it out yet and doesn't want to waste the money or their time, is there like a quick answer or is there anything that would immediately say, "Hey, this is this is worth it"? Um, with that, you uh, anybody who hasn't started the keto diet diet way of eating. And wants to know, is it worth it right off the bat? I can say that right off the bat, you're going to feel nasty because you're going to have uh, withdrawals from carbs. You're going to have, um, if you don't consume enough uh, salt or electrolytes, you're going to feel that as well. Uh, so the first one or two weeks, it's not going to be like, we, this is great, you know. But is it worth the fast results as far as is it worth it? You will find that you will lose a lot of water weight very quickly. So that may be a motivator. And that. Dehydrated? No, no, because uh, that's one thing you, you will need to continue to consume enough water. Uh, just like anything else, you should be drinking enough water, at least eight glasses a day. But, um, but you'll lose a lot of the water weight because the fat that's trapped in your body, uh, the, the glucose that's. Uh, holding all the water is being flushed out with the water. So glucose holds on the water and there you have it. So is it a good result? Uh, will you see quick results, fast results? Is it worth it? Results as far as you're going to feel like crud for the first two weeks? Yes. Results as well as you feeling, uh, losing a, a, a substantial amount of weight pretty quickly? Yeah. Yeah. And if you were to break during the, the first week, and you're able to jump on, is that harder or would you, would it be like just starting over? I think uh, as far as being harder, is, it depends on mindset. It could be that it's harder for someone to go back to, you know, back to the restrictive eating for a while. Um, but harder as far as like getting back into ketosis or something. If, harder just to like, you know, I guess getting back into the mindset. Okay, yeah, because I was going to say uh, ketosis, it doesn't really, you're not really there yet within your fat burning mode. It'll take more than two weeks for most people to get into ketosis, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, mind, <laughs> mindset, it really depends on the person. Uh, because you can have, uh, I'm going to do this mindset, and you may have messed up the first week, and you're like, oh man, I ate this, whatever, or I overdid it on the carbs, whatever, which happens like to everybody, but no, you just keep going. And if you have the winner mindset, you have to have the winner mindset. I'm going to win. I'm not going to be a victim of my food or my food choices. Then, I mean, you really you really have to. It's not as you can't do anything and expect to have results if you're not determined to have results. That's life. Right. And you need to be determined to let Christ strengthen you. Yes. <laughs> I think that was a really good question anyway. I think that was a really good question. And hopefully that does help you all. If you have questions, set it down below. I'll be glad to answer. I'm not a guru by any means. I mean, I get my information from the probably the same people you do. And I'm not talking about the internet. I'm talking about people who have done it. Because and if yeah. you don't want to uh, say it openly in the comments, you can also email, email us on our email. We can put it on the screen. Yeah, well, you can see it. See, here it is right here. Cool. So email us if you want to ask private questions. Like, I mean, of course, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional yet. Yes. <laughs> so until then, I can't, uh, I can't uh, give you medical advice. I can only tell you what works for me and how it could possibly and most likely benefit you. So I think I covered all of the three, um, the three plus the Thanksgiving uh, uh, topics that I wanted to cover. I covered Thanksgiving and how that went. I covered diabetes. I covered my keto journey. 
I covered my goals. Ah, and where do I see myself in the future? I see myself. Oh, I did. I covered that too. I see myself in the future doing keto. Why? Because it's easier on my body. My body feels good. My weight is continuously falling off still when I'm eating according to my macros and not anybody else's macros. Because that's why you have to mind your own macros. Exactly. You have to mind your own macros. You have to. If you want to enjoy your life and not have to be focused on what other people are doing. I mean, I love Thomas DeLauer, but I'm never going to be as tough or as, as fit as he is. I could. I'm not ever going to say never, but he's a man. So you got to base it off the hormones too. Your hormones play a part in the, your macros. And you have to accept that. Your age plays a part in your macros. You have to accept that too. Genetics plays a part in your macros. Can you have to be a victim? Mm -mm. Don't have to use it as a crutch. Nah, don't use it as a crutch. There, there are no reason for crutches, excuses, any of those things. There, anything that you want to put your mind to, given the the opportunity and the energy and the the willingness, you can achieve. It may not be one hundred percent the way you want it to be, but it will be better than where you were. And the and the first step is to walk away from where you were towards something better. So I guess that's it. Thanks, Olivia, for joining me on uh, this uh, keto, uh, this Lucky Stove Keto Variety Show. Talk show, Talk show today. It's chit chat, <laughs> and uh, you will catch me cooking next week. I actually have something really cool that I was uh, trying out with Olivia. So you'll be able to get to see that in action, and maybe you'll be able to utilize that for your own uh, for your own uh, household, and it could save you money. I love saving money. It is a DIY though. Don't forget, keto is DIY. You can get all that other prepackaged stuff, but then it it's helpful. It's all before you're in a pinch and just like right there. Yeah. In yeah. Long, long run, it doesn't save you much. Money. No. And then that's where people say, Kino is so expensive. Well, <laughs> eat whole foods is the answer that people say. Eat real food. Well, what if you don't want to? I'm going to show you a different way around that. But that'll be for the next video, next Sunday. Make sure to turn on your notifications so you can see it pop up and you can be the one to type first. Yeah. Why not be first? That's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. I, mean, I, I watch the whole video. Yeah, but watch the whole video. I know this is kind of long, but watch the whole video. The other one is worth it. I mean, I'll trim it down to make sure that it keeps your attention and you get to enjoy it, you know, without, you know. 20 minutes. Yeah, that's. But uh, in any case, thank you again for joining us at the Lucky Stove Keto Variety Show at this junction. And we really hope that this not only brings you luck, but the coupon you can do away with. At least for this, for this talk, for this moment. Use this. It's expired. Yeah, it's, yeah. Bye. Okay, guys, don't forget to comment down below. Guys? 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 <laughs>